Let's talk about the first 100 days. And this is when we start to get into the record where the rubber meets the road. As one of you pointed out, Donald Trump had the Senate. He had the House. He had a great ability to achieve a lot, a lot better ability than he did after 2018 with a, a Democratic House and, and a much better opportunity than when he doesn't have the Senate potentially uh, in a second term. And uh, so here's what he promised and here's what actually happened. The hiring freeze on all federal employees. One of Donald Trump's first actions on the Monday after taking office was to order a federal hiring freeze, excluding federal jobs deemed necessary to meet national security or public safety responsibilities. Perfect. We don't need more bureaucrats. Put a, put a hold on that. Uh, later that month, the administration released further details about which jobs were exempt, expanding it to seasonal workers in the entire USPS. The hiring freeze lasted roughly two months before Trump revoked it altogether on April 12th, 2017. Cutting regulations. On January 30th, 2017, Trump signed an executive order that merely called on agencies to identify two rules they think they could, that could be eliminated. So he said, think about it. Let me know what regulations you can cut. Now, some people took the opportunity because they had the, the political cover, but it was never a mandate. Um, the five-year ban on White House and congressional officials becoming lobbyists. On January 28, 2017, Trump signed an executive order on ethics that included a five-year ban on former White House officials lobbying the government. It didn't include congressional staff. It was just the executive branch, the White House specifically. However, there were only they were only prevented from lobbying the agency they worked for. So if you're a well-connected person that worked for the Energy Department, you could not lobby the Energy Department, but you could go lobby the Agricultural Department. Um, Trump also watered down a requirement from the Obama administration that all former officials wait at least two years before contacting their former agencies because he reduced it to one. Uh, <laughs> right, once you get into all this stuff, you go, <laughs> Damn it. all the bullshit sounds so good. But then when you look at what he actually did, you're like, oof, a lifetime ban on White House officials lobbying on behalf of a foreign government. Eight days after his inauguration, Trump signed an executive order requiring White House officials to sign an ethics pledge as a condition of employment. One of the nine different ethical commitments included, quote, I will not at any time after the termination of my employment in the United States government engage in any activity on behalf of any foreign government or foreign political party which were undertaken on January 20th, 2017 would require me to register under the Foreign Agents Res Registration Act of 1938 as amended. However, the order includes a clause allowing the, quote, president or his designee to grant waivers to anyone who has signed the pledge. So the well-connected to the Trump mm -hmm. administration ended up getting waivers. Um, withdrawal from the TPP. Three days into his presidency, Trump signed an executive order directing an end to negotiations over the trade deal. There is no however on that one. Label China a, cons a currency manipulator. On day 83 of his presidency, Trump declared in an interview with the Wall Street Journal that his Treasury Department would not be declaring China a currency manipulator at all. Trump then applied the label to China in a tweet on August 5th, 2019. In a subsequent Treasury Department statement, Steve Mnuchin and said Chinese authorities who have, quote, ample control over the country's money supply have openly acknowledged their central bank's ability to manipulate Chinese currency. In January 2020, at a sensitive point in trade negotiations with China, the Trump administration rescinded that label and said that tweet that isn't government law or a government force uh, doesn't apply anymore. Cancel billions in payments to the UN climate change programs. On June 1st, 2017, Donald Trump announced that the U.S. would cease all participation in the 2015 Paris Agreement on Climate Change Mitigation. Following Trump's announcement, the governors of several U.S. states formed the United States Climate Alliance to continue to advance the objectives of the Paris Agreement at the state level. As of July 2019, 24 states and Puerto Rico have joined the alliance. Look at that. Federalism at work. Who'd have thunk? Uh, 
Next, cancel all fun federal funding to sanctuary cities. Mere days before the 100-day mark, the Trump administration suffered a defeat on this when a federal judge in the Northern District of California blocked the Trump administration from doing anything to deny funds to cities and counties based on whether they counted as sanctuaries. Since then, courts across the country have held back. Trump's attempts to withhold federal funding for states and local jurisdictions that limit their cooperation with federal immigration authorities. There is no at work. <laughs> yeah, there is no f official definition or list of sanctuary cities, and some cities have pushed back on that label, meaning the president willy-nilly can declare any city he doesn't like or mayor who's mean to him as a quote sanctuary city and begin the process. So it's by diktat. It's not rule of law. It's rule of man. So therefore, we fully reject that. This U.S. Supreme Court in June refused a request from Trump uh, to review a case challenging a California law that restricts police cooperation with federal immigration authorities. Let me pause there. Is there anything in that stuff that, that jumps out to you? What, the stopping the, the, the local cops working for the federal police? Anything that I've read, uh, I just wanted to drink. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, that one was like, was, was like scary BS because that's those, a lot of the things of how a lot of the states are stopping or doing decrim for marijuana prosecution is because, nope, you it's like, nope, we're just not going to do it on the state level and you can't use our local police to go after marijuana people. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Bring, your own, bring your own federal officers, bring your own money. Reinhold? No, that's the way I think it should be. And um, the sanctuary city stuff, again, I think you nailed it with the fact that he's just declaring who he doesn't like to be, to be a sanctuary. So anybody who's liberal is obviously running a sanctuary city, right? So therefore, you know, all of his political enemies, he can just go after. Mm -hmm. and we see that time again with him where he wants to go after his political enemies with the rule of law, which isn't the rule of law, the way he implements it. Um, the Justice Department's trying to do that with uh, several instances, and it's um, it's just not the way that we want a president to act. Um, but here we are. We're just yeah, if if you're going to have government, limited like good government, limited government, you you want all that. If we're to have a government, like libertarians don't, while we advocate for no government murray rothbard talked about this in uh the video is titled libertarianism by murray rothbard it's a speech to the uh michigan libertarian party and he outlines it he's like listen we have to advocate the pure principle we have to talk about no government or or you know anarchism and and give that pure ideology but we also have to keep an eye on how to get there you know and so, so some of people have lost rothbard's original statement especially by people who revere Rothbard, it's all or nothing now as opposed to the principles of good government. You know, uh, there the, no, is no good government. I mean, there has to be rules if there is to be government. You know, for instance, if you're going to have a state and it does have control over you, everybody should get a vote in that. You know, like that's that's one principle of it, you know, so I, I'm getting pushback on some of the, you know, like the, the the Postal Service stuff. You can make the libertarian case that the Postal Service should not exist and we should make that case. But let's do it in the most empathetic way so that Todd Hagopian's child isn't hurt in the process. Right. right? Like there's ways to to abolish the state. You know, even Marie Rothbard admits that. So go go check out that video. Um, uh, Darla says, is this the most depressing election? Yes. <laughs> 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 yes, the, uh, absolutely it is.